1. Investment and Savings Segregated funds and annuities are investment and savings products marketed to individual and group prospects and clients. Segregated funds are exclusive to the life insurance industry. Only licensed life agents can represent segregated funds. Some annuities are also exclusive to the life insurance industry. Others are sold both by licensed life agents and by other financial institutions such as banks. Segregated funds and annuities provide guarantees to investors. They can help some investors reach their financial objectives, such as retirement. Many options are available for those who save and have the desire to invest those savings. Every option has features suitable for some investors but not others. The life agent has a duty to clients to identify which investment is in their best interest, to represent information fairly, and to know the limits on the advice he is authorized to give. 1.1 Investment and Saving Principles There are certain time-honored principles that apply to investing and saving. It is essential to understand these basics, which are the foundation of all investing and saving, before focusing on segregated funds and annuities in particular. 1.1.1 Concept of Investing Investing can only begin when an individual has savings in the bank or has the ability to set money aside from income that can be earmarked for savings. You may find that some coaching is required to get your client on the path to saving so that investing can begin and wealth is accumulated. How can saving be simplified and encouraged? There are some old standby methods that have stood the test of time. They include Pay yourself first Make savings an item on the budget, just like any other expense. This reduces the temptation to spend. For instance, a pre-authorized contribution PAC, or pre-authorized deposit PAD, to a savings or investment account is a highly effective way to build savings. Save 10% of take-home pay, exactly as its name says, but the percentage may need adjustment according to individual circumstances. Save exceptional payments, Save money received from an income tax refund or a work bonus. Set up savings buckets. A savings bucket has a dedicated purpose. It is rewarding to see savings goals for specific objectives being reached and can reinforce savings habits. Buckets could include retirement, holidays, or big-ticket items such as a car. Budgeting. Budgeting is crucial for managing day-to-day -day finances and allocating a sum for saving. When savings have accumulated or can be earmarked, then it is time to start considering how to grow that money through investing. Investing is the process of using savings to purchase investment products with the goal of making money. A business invests money in new equipment, for instance, that will help it make more products faster or cheaper. The business profits from its investment. The goal of individual investors is to invest a sum, called principal or capital, in an investment product that will be repaid to the investor plus a profit. That profit is called the return. Many investment products are available for individual investors. Some investments guarantee that the full amount invested will be repaid plus a profit. These investments include guaranteed investment certificates, GICs, and some bonds. Other investments do not guarantee that the amount invested will be repaid. These non-guaranteed investments include stocks, mutual funds, and real estate. Example Jean is 78 years old and depends on the returns from her investments to generate income to support her in retirement. Her investments, combined with her pensions, allow her to live comfortably. Jean feels that she cannot afford to risk her invested money in an investment that would not pay both her principal plus the stated return. Therefore, Jean chooses guaranteed investments to ensure that she will not experience losses. Where do segregated funds and annuities stand in respect to such guarantees? This chapter and this manual describe how these insurance investments provide guarantees, to whom and when. 1.1.2 Investment Basics Some investment basics are fundamental to understanding how investing works, how returns are generated for investors, and how investors manage risk. 1.1.2.1 Compounding, 
Compound interest, compounding is a concept that is basic to investing. It is a very powerful investing tool. Interest on an investment may be paid daily, monthly, quarterly, or annually. The investment may permit withdrawal of the interest or for the interest to be added to the value of the investment. When it is added or reinvested, the value of the investment grows. At the time of the next interest payment, interest is calculated and paid on the total investment value. That value is a sum of principal plus interest previously paid. As a result, the investor earns interest on interest. This form of interest is called compound interest. It achieves escalated investment growth as Table 1.1 shows. Of interest is called compound interest. It achieves escalated investment growth as Table 1.1 shows. Table 1.1 Investment Growth Escalated by Compound Interest Your interest is received on 1 principal 2 principal plus interest earned in year 1 3 principal plus interest earned in years 1 and 2 for principal plus interest earned in years 1, 2 and 3 5 principal plus interest earned in years 1, 2, 3 and 4 etc. until the investment matures or the investor ends the investment. Compounding is especially effective when it is applied over a long period of time. Diagram 1.1 shows how the compounding effect accelerates. Time is money's best friend. That is why advisors recommend that individuals start saving as early in life as possible so that the benefits of compounding can be realized to their full potential. Diagram 1.1 Growth of Invested Money Over Time In order for compounding to work to its maximum potential, all investment returns must be reinvested. Withdrawals diminish or eliminate compounding. Unfortunately, compounding also has a negative side since costs can also compound. Debt, in which an outstanding unpaid balance is charged interest, also compounds. 1.1.2.2 Investment Returns All investments have one of three types of return. Returns can be positive and reflect a profit earned from the investment. Returns can be neutral, in which the investor receives the sum initially invested plus any fees paid. He is back where he started. Returns can also be negative. In this case, the investor will not receive back all the money invested. This is a risk of investing. The return is often expressed as a percentage of the amount invested. In those cases, it is called rate of return. It can be a positive number, such as 10%, or a negative number, such as minus 10%. Example. Salim invests $10,000 but receives $11,000 when he sells the investment. The $1,000 profit, $11,000 to $10,000, is a 10% rate of return, $1,000 divided by $10,000. In some cases, investors may be informed of the expected rate of return on an investment before they invest. In others, it is impossible to tell investors what to expect because the return cannot be accurately predicted. This is a characteristic of a risky investment. There is also a scale of risk expressed for investments, which is a guide to the investor about how likely it is that he will receive all his money back. The scale of risk plots the amount of risk an investor takes on in a range between the bottom of the scale, which is very low risk, and the top of the scale, which is extreme, called speculative risk. An investor with a very low risk investment can be very confident that he will receive back all his invested money. Speculative investments are the most risky. An investor who makes a speculative investment knows that he may not get back all the money he has invested. There is a very high degree of risk that he will experience a negative return and lose money. However, there is also a possibility of very high returns and earning a significant profit. Moderate or balanced risk investments are in between the two ends of the risk spectrum. Why would an investor consider risky investments? Risky investments provide the opportunity for far greater positive returns than those with lower risk. This concept underlies investment risk slash return theory. It is based on rewarding those who are prepared to risk their money with a better return. 
Investors who are not willing to risk the loss of their money receive a lower rate of return. Returns are classified as nominal returns or real returns. A nominal return is the stated or advertised rate. For example, a savings account is advertised with a 2% return. That is its nominal return. Real return is calculated as the nominal return on an investment minus the rate of inflation. Example If the annual nominal return on a guaranteed investment certificate is 3% and the annual rate of inflation is 1.8%, then the real rate of return on the bond is 1.2%, 3% to 1.8%. 1.1.2.3 Asset Classes Asset classes are categories assigned to investments that have similar characteristics and are governed by similar laws and regulations. The three main asset classes are stocks, also called equities, bonds, also called fixed income or debt, and cash, also called money market instruments. Two other classes are often added. They are real estate and commodities. Each type of asset class has its own risk and return features. Asset classes are fundamental to the investment concept of diversification. 1.1.2. For diversification Diversification is a strategy used in investment portfolios and pooled investments. It combines asset classes and investments within those classes to spread out investing risk. Therefore, diversification in a portfolio lessens risk based on the well-known theory of not putting all your eggs in one basket. Diversification can be accomplished in many ways. It could be through buying stocks of a wide range of industries or companies, or bonds with varying interest rates. Another form of diversification uses foreign investments to take advantage of different economic conditions in other countries. This spreads risk over national and foreign investments, and their respective economic conditions. When an investor buys into a pooled investment, like a segregated fund, he automatically receives the benefit of diversification. Each segregated fund is invested in a wide range of investments specific to its type. For instance, a bond fund is diversified across a broad spectrum of bonds in its portfolio that mature at different times, have varying degrees of risk, and make payments at different interest rates. Other investments that offer similar diversification include mutual funds and exchange-traded funds, ETFs. When an investor buys one stock or bond, or 10, or even 100, he is not receiving the full benefit of diversification 1. Risk is centered on performance of those individual investments. If they lose value, there are not sufficient offsetting investments to compensate for losses. Therefore, it is very difficult for an individual investor to achieve diversification unless he invests in a fund-type investment. Most investors simply do not have enough investment capital to be able to achieve adequate diversification in a portfolio of their own stocks and bonds. Those that do often rely on investment professionals for frequent advice. 1.1.2.5 Liquidity Liquidity describes the ability to cash in, or sell, an investment quickly at or near its current market price. An investment that has characteristics of liquidity is called a liquid investment. A savings account is a liquid investment because some or all of its value can be quickly accessed for use. An investment that does not have characteristics of liquidity is called a liquid. Real estate is often cited as an example of an illiquid investment since considerable time, could elapse between the sale of a property and receiving its proceeds. Liquidity is essential in an investment when a part or all of its value will be used to provide an emergency fund to an investor. An emergency fund is a portion of earnings set aside for emergency purposes, such as when there is a sudden need for income due to an unexpected job loss. When such a need arises, the investor must be able to quickly and easily sell his investment and obtain its highest market value. 1.1.3 Time Value of Money The present value of money is one aspect of the principle known as the time value of money. The future value of money is the other. It is very important to understand the differences between the two. 
Both principles are based on the potential for invested money to increase in value over time due to interest being earned. They do not consider investment growth due to other factors, such as capital gains. 1.1.3.1 Present Value Understanding present value, PV, and being able to calculate a present value sum is essential to many financial planning activities. Present value works backwards from a future date. It answers the question of how much is needed now to achieve a future savings goal. Therefore, it would be used to help a person determine how much needs to be saved today to yield specified retirement savings at a future date. Likewise, a parent who must meet future post-secondary education costs for a child could be provided with that information from a present value calculation. Present value tells us that if $5,000 is needed at a future date then less than $5,000 needs to be saved today because today's sum will earn interest and grow over time. The present value calculation is performed when the future sum is known, the future date is known when the sum is needed, and when the interest rate between today and the future date can be specified. Present value is generally calculated using a calculator, through an online resource, or with software provided by insurers. It applies to both a sum of money and cash flows. The formula for the calculation is PV equals FV divided by 1 plus interest rate N. FV is the known future value and N is the number of periods for the calculation. Example Julie wants to know how much is needed today to provide $5,000 in 5 years, given the current annual interest rate of 3%. The present value of $5,000 in 5 years based on 3% interest is $4,313.04, PV equals $5,000 divided by 1 plus 0 0.035. Julie needs to invest dollar four three thirteen zero four at three percent interest today to equal five thousand dollars in five years time. One dot one dot three dot two future value. The future value FV calculation answers the question of how much a sum invested today will be worth in the future. Therefore, if a future retiree has a certain amount saved for retirement purposes now he can determine how much that amount will be worth at retirement in 10 years using a future value calculation. The calculation is performed when today's amount of investment is known, the future date is known, and the interest rate between today and the future date can be specified. Like present value, future value is generally calculated using a calculator, through an online resource, or software provided by insurers. The formula for the calculation is FV equals PV times 1 plus interest rate N. PV is today's known sum, present value, and N is the number of periods for the calculation. Example Sim has $5,000 today and wants to know the value of that sum in 5 years, given the current annual interest rate of 3%. The future value of $5,000 in 5 years' time at 3% annual interest is $5,796.37, FV equals $5,000 times 1 plus 0 0.035. Sam will have $5,796.37 available for his needs in 5 years if he invests $5,000 today at 3% interest. 1.2 Investment Objectives Investors have many reasons for investing and saving. Their reasons are called their investment objectives. It is important for investors to articulate their objectives since the purpose of investing and any time constraints will be the basis for many investment decisions. Investment objectives can be classified as short-term, medium-term, or long-term. A short-term objective is a goal to be reached in three years or less. Medium term is the period between 3 and 10 years and long-term objectives are 10 years or more. An example of a short-term objective would be saving for a holiday next year. Medium-term objectives could include saving for a new car or for the down payment on a home in 5 years. One of the most common long-term objectives is saving for retirement, which might be many years in the future. Investment objectives for individual clients are very different from those for groups 
such as a group of employees covered by a pension plan. While the individual focuses on his specific needs, a group plan focuses on the needs of the group administrator, which is usually the employer. Its goal is often to offer an employee benefit by providing a retirement pension to their group. By providing a plan that helps to attract and retain quality employees, the plan serves the goal of the employer. Knowing the client is the key to understanding his investment objectives. 1.2.1 Account Purpose Many forms of accounts are available to meet investment objectives. It is important to align the proper account with the appropriate investment objective. Here are some forms of accounts available and their purpose. Registered Retirement Savings Plan, RRSP Retirement. Registered Education Savings Plan, RESP Post-Secondary Education Costs, usually for a child or grandchild. Registered Disability Savings Plan, RDSP Income for a Disabled Dependent. Tax-Free Savings Account, TFSA Tax-Free Investment Growth. Registered Pension Plan, RPP Retirement Savings for Members of a Group These accounts are all examples of registered accounts. Registered accounts are individually registered in the account owner's name with the Canada Revenue Agency, CRA, to provide tax benefits. Non-registered accounts are also available for savings and investing. They have flexibility for deposits and withdrawals, unlike registered accounts. Although not registered with CRA, returns must be reported to CRA for tax purposes. It is important to recognize that the account itself, whether registered or not, is simply like a shopping bag. The bag is empty until savings go into the bag and those savings are invested. Investors typically shop around for the best investments for their savings. Their investment choices determine account performance. Therefore, a person cannot be dissatisfied with owning an RRSP, for instance, since the RRSP is simply the account type. He can be dissatisfied with the types of investments he has selected within the RRSP because they are not performing adequately to meet his retirement objective. Those investments can be removed from the account and replaced with others to achieve the account performance that will satisfy his investment goals. 1.2.2 Financial Goals a financial goal is a dollar figure associated with an investment objective. For example, an investment objective is retirement at age 60. The financial goal is to have $800,000 saved in an RRSP at age 60 so that retirement can begin. Financial goals are a target that investors can work towards. They are a powerful motivator to begin saving and investing, continue saving and investing, and monitor investment performance. 1.2.3 Need for Guaranteed Investments A guaranteed investment is an investment that makes a guarantee to its investors. The guarantee may be to pay back some or all of the money invested at a future date. That guarantee might be enhanced by also guaranteeing that a specified return will also be paid to the investor. Guaranteed investments are safe investments. They have less risk than investments that do not provide a guarantee. They appeal to investors who are not risk-takers. For the most part, their returns are lower than investments that are not guaranteed. Guaranteed investments offer investors great peace of mind. Investors know the minimum amount they will receive and when they will receive it. With some guaranteed investments, such as annuities, there is no need to monitor investment performance or be concerned about UPSN downs in the stock market. Investors who have predetermined obligations, such as the need to pay university tuition for a child at a set date in the future, can rely, for example, on guaranteed investments to meet their obligations. Finally, guaranteed investments are often the preferred investment choice for those whose ability to earn an income from working is restricted. This is often because these individuals are either nearing retirement or have already retired. They do not have the capacity to recover from losses on investments where the principal may not be repaid. They need their principal returned because they are no longer able to regenerate that sum through employment. 1.2. For Time Horizon A time horizon is a future event when invested money will be needed to meet financial objectives. 
For example, the time horizon for someone saving for retirement is the date of retirement. Time horizons are unique to each individual and objective. It is possible for an investor to have many different time horizons based on different objectives. He may have a time horizon for buying a new car, buying a second home, starting a business, paying for post-secondary education, and retiring. As a result, he may have a different time horizon for each saving or investing account. In general, those who have a long time horizon have the ability to invest more aggressively, or with more risk, because they have more time to make up for investment losses that may be incurred as a result of assuming higher risk. The time horizon is closely related to the concept of the time value of money, both present value and future value. Calculating such values provides answers about how much is needed for investment now to meet the stated time horizon, or how much will be available at the stated time horizon. Martin has just received an inheritance of $200,000. His time horizon to retirement is seven years. If he can assume he will earn 4% per year, in seven years' time his inheritance will be worth $263,186, FV equals $200,000 times 1 plus 0.047. 1 1.2.5 Tax Advantaged Investing For tax purposes, investment returns are classified as interest, dividends, or capital gains. Each form of return is taxed differently. It is important to know that even though taxation varies, Returns are usually the objective of investing. Even though interest is taxed at the highest rate, an investor does not want to avoid receiving interest due to the tax he will pay. Interest is taxed at the same rate as income earned from working. There are no tax advantages to receiving interest. Foreign income, including foreign dividends, is taxed as interest. The marginal tax rate of the investor applies to interest income. Divid Dividends are paid quarterly by companies from their earnings to their stock owners. Not all companies pay dividends and there is no guarantee that a dividend will be paid. Investors with stock in qualifying Canadian companies who receive dividends may benefit from the dividend tax credit. As a result of the tax credit, which reduces tax, the dividends are taxed at a lower rate than interest. The investor's marginal tax rate is applied to the balance after the credit has been applied. Capital gains result when the sale of capital property, such as stocks, is higher than its adjusted cost base, which is primarily the cost of purchase. Capital gains tax is the lowest rate of investment taxation. Only 50% of the capital gain is taxed at the investor's marginal tax rate. Another tax advantage for investments that earn capital gains is capital losses. If an investor loses money on an investment, he incurs a capital loss. Although a capital loss means an investor has lost money on his investment, half the capital loss can be deducted from taxable capital gains on other investments. The loss must be used first against capital gains in the year the loss is incurred. However, if capital gains are unavailable or insufficient in that year, the capital loss may be applied against capital gains in any of the three previous years or in any future year. This reduces the amount of taxable capital gain and the tax to be paid on that gain. The lowest risk investments tend to pay interest. Those that generate capital gains are the riskiest. Therefore, the investor who chooses the riskiest investments can benefit from the opportunity to earn a higher rate of return and from the tax advantages of these investments. 1.3 Types of Investments a life agent license allows sales of segregated fund and annuity investments. These are just two possible types of investment in the total universe of investments. Investors may be satisfied learning only about these investments. However, it is far more likely they want to compare many investments to identify the investment most suitable for their objectives and risk tolerance. For instance, an investor may want to compare segregated funds with mutual funds. Therefore, it is necessary for the agent to understand other investments. This allows the agent to make useful and accurate comparisons of investments to best serve client needs. Having an understanding of other types of investments 
also allows the agent to better understand segregated funds. For instance, an agent who understands stocks and stock market behavior can better explain equity segregated funds to investors. 1.3.1 Segregated Funds The legal term for a segregated fund is an Individual Variable Insurance Contract, or IVIC. This term is rarely used and segregated funds are most often simply called segregated or seg funds. Segregated funds are created and sold by life insurance companies. However, not all life insurers offer segregated funds. Those that do go through a process to develop a fund and get the necessary approvals from regulators for the fund. Once all approvals are in place, the fund is open for investment. The date when the fund begins operations is its inception date. Insurers keep their segregated funds separate from other company assets, which is why the funds are called segregated. Insurers manage their segregated funds on an ongoing basis and provide relevant information to potential and existing investors. They are required by law to set aside financial reserves so they can meet their contractual obligations for maturity and death benefit guarantees. People buy segregated funds to benefit from the guarantees they offer for return of capital. This makes segregated funds less risky than mutual funds. Segregated funds are also highly valued because, in the event of the death of the policy owner, the proceeds bypass probate. Probate fees are charged in all provinces except Quebec on assets of a deceased. They can pose a significant charge to an estate. Money is pooled in the fund from the deposits of policy owners. Deposits are made by individuals and groups. Those deposits are invested by the segregated fund manager according to the type of fund that has been created. For instance, the money invested in a bond fund is used by its manager to invest primarily in bonds. Insurers offer many types of segregated funds to match up with the investment objectives of individual investors. Segregated funds are available as investment options for non-registered accounts and registered accounts, such as an RRSP. 1.3.1.1 Advantages and Disadvantages of Segregated Funds Segregated funds offer some unique advantages compared to other forms of investment. They also have many features in common with other fund-type investments. This overview is an introduction to the reasons people buy segregated funds. It also introduces some of the disadvantages to be taken into consideration regarding segregated funds. Details on these advantages and disadvantages appear in the following chapters of this manual. Unique advantages of segregated funds, black small square maturity and death benefit guarantees, black small square ability to reset provided in some contracts, black small square possible creditor protection, black small square right to designate a beneficiary and bypass probate, black small square tax benefit received when capital losses are incurred, black small square investor protection provided by assuries. Some advantages segregated funds share with other fund investments, black small square wide variety of funds available, black small square ease of investment, black small square vast amount of information available on funds both before and after purchase, black small square diversification provided, black small square professional management provided by the fund manager, black small square liquidity, black small square ease of switching from one fund to another, black small square ease of redemption, making a withdrawal or surrender of the contract, Black Small Square Ability to Create an Income Stream from Account Value, Black Small Square. Available for registered, such as RRSP, and non-registered accounts. Some unique disadvantages of segregated funds that are not shared by other fund investments, Black Small Square Minimum 10-Year Term to Maturity for the Maturity Guarantee to Apply, Black Small Square Often Higher Fees Charged to Investors than Mutual Funds, in the form of the Management Expense Ratio, MER, Black small square possible age restrictions on deposits. Some disadvantages segregated funds share with other fund investments, black small square too many choices of funds, and often little differentiation between choices, black small square sales charges, and ongoing fees charged as the MER. Segregated funds and annuities chapter 1 investment and savings 14. 1.3.1.2 where and how to buy segregated funds. Segregated funds are sold primarily by life insurance agents and brokers. 
Some segregated funds are also sold by investment dealers, but those dealers act as agents of the life insurers, the investment dealers are only a sales channel. In investors must be knowledgeable about their segregated fund investment. To ensure they have all necessary details, the agent provides an information folder before or at the time of purchase. The information folder describes the key benefits of the contract. It also provides information about the fund itself, such as fees the investor pays and past performance. When the investor is prepared to make the segregated fund investment, he will complete an application, usually with the agent's assistance. The application is taken by the agent and sent to the insurer. The insurer prepares the segregated fund contract. That contract is a legal document that describes all the terms of agreement between the investor and insurer. It is finalized when the contract is signed and the investor has made a deposit to the account. The contract is an insurance policy and the investor is the policy owner. 1.3.1.3 Types of Segregated Funds Many types of segregated funds are offered. They may be specialized by asset class to include only stocks, or only bonds, or only money market instruments. They also may be based only on real estate, or only on commodities. They may be specialized geographically, for instance to invest only in equities of a specific country, such as Canada, or region, such as North America. Instead of investing in a single asset class, funds may combine asset classes, such as stocks and bonds. Such funds are often called balanced funds. Balanced funds may represent investment in a single country or across regions. Some segregated funds invest in other segregated funds. These are called funds of funds. Other subcategories of funds are also available, but they are based on the main asset classes. A dividend fund, for instance, is based on stocks since dividends can result from owning stocks. Funds offered by different insurers may have very similar names but be quite different. The Canadian Equity Fund offered by XYZ Insurance Company will not be the same as the Canadian Equity Fund offered by ABC Insurance Company. Each fund holds stocks of companies, and the companies may vary fund to fund. Even when the same companies are held in each fund, the percentage of the fund invested in those companies will not be the same. The availability of so many types of funds allows investors to choose from among levels of risk and rates of return. Some funds are riskier than others. Some funds have a higher rate of return than others. Each is designed with specific investor objectives and risk tolerance in mind. 1.3.1. For returns and guarantees of segregated funds. The return the segregated fund investor receives is a result of fund performance, increases or decreases in the value of investments in the fund minus fees. The return is reported after fees, if a fund earns 7% and fees are 3%, 4% is the investor's return. The return is stated as a percentage and it can be a positive number, such as 5%, which shows a profit has been created, or a negative number, such as minus 5%, which shows a loss in the value of the investment. The investor is able to monitor returns for the most recent month, 3 months, year to date, 1 year, 2 years, 3 years, 5 years, 10 years, and since the fund's inception. It is a well-known truth of investing that past results do not indicate future performance. In other words, an investor is only certain of one thing, what has happened. He can never rely on past returns to predict future returns. Investors are able to limit negative returns from their segregated fund investments due to the maturity guarantee and death benefit guarantee. The maturity guarantee states that when the contract matures the investor will receive a minimum of 75% of the sum he has invested. This guarantee is a minimum return since the amount the investor receives is the greater of the maturity guarantee or the market value of the fund. Example Lee invests $1,000 in a segregated fund contract with a 75% maturity guarantee. The maturity guarantee is $750, $1,000 times 75%, when his contract matures. Scenario 1 The market value of the contract at maturity is $620.
Therefore, Lee receives the maturity guarantee of $750. Scenario 2 The market value of his contract at maturity is $1,440. Therefore, Lee receives the market value of $1,440. There is also a death benefit guarantee provided in segregated fund contracts. If the life insured, called the annuitant, named in the contract dies during the term of the contract, the beneficiary receives a minimum of 75% of the sum invested. If the market value of the contract is higher than the 75% guarantee, the beneficiary receives the market value. Segregated Funds and Annuities Chapter 1 Investment and Savings 16 Example Jane invests $1,000 in a segregated fund contract with a 75% death benefit guarantee. The death benefit guarantee is $750, $1,000 times 75%. Scenario 1 When Jane dies, the market value of her contract is $700. Therefore, Jane's beneficiary receives the death benefit guarantee of $750. Scenario 2 When Jane dies, the market value of her contract is $910. Therefore, Jane's beneficiary receives the market value of the contract, $910. Together these guarantees limit losses. An investor knows that the maximum amount of loss he could face is the difference between the sum invested and the guarantee amount. Example Stephen invests $10,000 in a segregated fund with a 75% maturity and death benefit guarantee. He is guaranteed to receive a minimum of $7,500, $10,000 times 75%, at maturity or if he dies. The most he can lose over the total period of the contract is $2,500, 10000 to $7,500. Therefore, if he has the intention of holding the fund until its maturity, he can choose to invest in more risky funds and try to achieve a higher positive return. However, he also knows the most that can be lost. The returns segregated fund investors receive are earned as interest, dividends, foreign income, and capital gains. Investors do not receive the annual return as cash. All returns are reinvested in the fund on an ongoing basis as they are earned. An investor may choose to hold his segregated fund investment in a non-registered account, a registered account or both. Investors with non-registered accounts are allocated the return as it is earned in the fund. For instance, capital gains earned in the fund are reported to the investor as capital gains, the investor also receives capital losses if they occur. The amount reported to the investor as the return must be included in each year's income tax filing. Investors with registered accounts do not report returns for tax purposes every year. They earn returns the same as those with non-registered accounts, but their returns are reinvested in the contract. However, when the time comes to make a withdrawal from their registered contract, investors will find that the sum they receive is taxed at the same rate as income from interest, regardless of how it was earned. In other words, they do not receive the tax benefits of a capital gain or loss, or the dividend tax credit. This is true for all taxable registered accounts. A tax-free savings account is an exception because it is not a taxable account. Robert invests $10,000 in a Canadian equity fund held in his Registered Retirement Savings Plan RRSP, account. Every year the fund grows in value as a result of buying and selling stocks of blue-chip Canadian companies. The growth is all in the form of capital gains earned by selling stocks at a profit. At the end of the contract, Robert's contract is worth $14,324. This sum is now available to him in cash that he can withdraw. If Robert withdraws money from the account, the withdrawal will be taxed as RRSP income, which is taxed at the same rate as income from interest. 1.3.1.5 Risks of Investing in Segregated Funds While segregated funds are a relatively lower risk investment, at contract maturity an investor still risks the loss of up to 25% of his investment, the difference between the amount invested and the minimum maturity guarantee. Prior to contract maturity, an investor can lose up to the sum invested since the maturity guarantee does not apply. 
The investor must also be prepared for the minimum 10-year term of the investment. The investor may be unable to take advantage of other investment opportunities during those 10 years. 1.3.1.6 Investor Protection Consumers are protected against insolvency, or bankruptcy, of the insurer that holds their segregated fund contracts through Assuries, a nonprofit organization that protects policyholders if their life insurance company fails. This means that if the insurer itself goes bankrupt, the invested money is protected, up to certain limits, by Assuries. The investor is protected against total loss of his principal. The details of the protection Assuries provides are covered later in this manual. Assuries does not provide protection against market losses. Protection against a loss in the value of an investment is provided by the guarantees of certain investments, like the 75% segregated fund maturity guarantee. Non-guaranteed investments can fall to zero value in the market, and there is no recourse for the investor. 1.3.2 Annuities Some investments return the principal invested, plus any profit as a lump sum to the investor. An annuity is different in that it produces a stream of payments over a period of time. Annuity payments are a combination of the investor's principal and interest paid by the insurer. For this reason, annuities are considered to be a very reliable source of income. They are highly secure, widely available, and protected by assuries. An annuity is created through a contract between the annuity provider, usually an insurance company, and an investor. The investor's principal is used to fund the contract. The investor names the person who will receive the income payments. This person is called the annuitant. The annuitant may also be known as the annuitant grantee or payee. It is important to carefully read the definitions of the annuity contract, since the wording of the different parties might be different from one contract to another or from one insurer to another. The amount received by the annuitant is called an annuity payment. The annuity payment is based on an annuity rate offered by the insurer, which is largely the prevailing interest rate at the time the investment is made. However, larger sums of principal invested in an annuity receive a higher annuity payment than lower amounts. The annuity payment is also affected by the age and gender of the annuitant. Annuity rates vary between providers. When the annuity payment at the time of purchase is fixed, that payment will be received for the duration of the annuity. It is guaranteed. If interest rates rise, the annuity payment does not increase. Likewise, if interest rates fall, the annuity payment does not decrease. Several types of annuity do not have fixed annuity rates. Their payments are variable. Each guarantees a minimum payment. One form of variable annuity links to investment performance. Its payment will be the minimum payment plus any additional payment as a result of its investment performance. The other form of variable annuity, called an indexed annuity, links to the rate of inflation and increases payments in step with rising inflation. Therefore, its payment is a minimum payment adjusted for any increase in the inflation rate. People buy annuities because of their dependability, they can count on their regular annuity payment. Annuities also relieve the annuitant from any decisions about their investment after initial choices are made. Investors need not worry that they could mismanage their money and possibly experience losses. In effect, the annuity payment is like a pension payment. 1.3.2.1 Advantages and Disadvantages of Annuities Some advantages of annuities have already been introduced. The comprehensive list of advantages includes Black Small Square Steady Income Stream Black Small Square 2 Variable Forms, a variable annuity for investors who hope to increase payments through stock market increases, and an indexed annuity for investors who want to increase payments in step with the rising cost of living. Black Small Square Choice of Payment Frequency, Monthly, Quarterly, Semi-Annually, or Annually Black Small Square No Need for Investment Decisions Black small square no need to monitor performance. Black small square no worry about outliving one's money when a life annuity or joint and last survivor annuity is purchased. Black small square if the annuity is prescribed, less tax may be due in the early years of payment, 
Black Small Square Investor Protection of Insurance Annuity Contracts Through Assuries, Black Small Square Available for Registered, such as RRSP, and Non-Registered Accounts. Like all investments, annuities have certain disadvantages. They are, Black Small Square Lack of Flexibility, Changes Cannot Be Made to the Annuity Contract, Black Small Square Interest Rate Risk, If Interest Rates Rise During the Contract, the contract continues annuity payments based on the initial, lower annuity rate, black small square penalties to surrender or withdraw from the contract. Black small square loss of principal for an annuitant with a life annuity if death occurs before all the capital paid to buy the annuity has not been paid out in benefits. Black small square the amount of money needed to fund an annuity. Often not less than $50,000, black small square if the annuity is non-prescribed, there may be a greater tax liability in the early years of payment. Details on these advantages and disadvantages appear in the following chapters of this manual. 1.3.2.2 Where and how to buy annuities Life insurance companies sell all forms of annuities. Other financial institutions, such as banks, are restricted to sales of term annuities only. Compared to segregated fund investing, a person buying an annuity has very few choices about the investment. He selects the type of annuity, the amount of funding, a payment schedule, and is offered an annuity rate. The annuity can be held in a non-registered or registered account. 1.3.2.3 Types of annuities The different types of annuities available are the subject of Chapter 3, where they are reviewed in depth. This overview introduces the generic names for what is available. Insurance companies adapt these generic names for marketing purposes. Annuities are fundamentally available in a form that pays an income, called a payout annuity, or a form used for savings, called an accumulation annuity. Payout annuities are the most common. Payout annuities are available in three forms, black small square term annuity, also known as a term certain annuity, lasts a specific period of time, such as 20 years. Black small square life annuity, lasts for the life of the annuitant. When the annuitant dies, the annuity ends. Black Small Square Joint Annuity, also known as a joint and last survivor annuity, used by couples so that when one spouse dies, the surviving spouse continues to receive an income from the annuity. When the surviving spouse dies, the annuity ends. 1.3.2. For returns and guarantees of annuities. The annuity payment is guaranteed for the duration of the annuity unless the contract is a variable or indexed annuity. As discussed, these forms of annuity provide a minimum guarantee but may supplement that amount with an additional return. 1.3.2.5 Risks of Investing in Annuities Interest rate risk is the primary risk of an annuity investment. If interest rates rise after the contract is finalized, the investor cannot benefit from the higher rate. The investor may also be subject to inflation risk. Inflation is the increase in the Consumer Price Index, CPI, which is a measure of the cost of goods and services. The CPI generally sees prices increase and illustrates how goods and services cost more year after year. The annuitant who does not have an indexed annuity that keeps pace with the rate of inflation finds a sure loss of purchasing power over time. As the cost of living goes up, the annuity payment, which is the same amount, over its entire contract buys less and less. The longer the annuity payment is received, the greater the inflation impact. 1.3.2.6 Investor Protection Assuries provides protection for annuity owners and annuitants against the insolvency of life insurance companies. All annuity contracts sold by insurers will be assuries covered. The details of the protection assuries provides are covered later in this manual. 1.3.3 Stocks Stocks are also known as shares or equities. An investor who buys stock in a company is buying ownership in that company. He becomes an owner of a share of the company in proportion to his investment, no matter how small. When investors believe that the fortunes of the company will rise, the value of the investment increases. The opposite is also true. Information about stock value is widely available through websites. Investors need to learn as much as they can about a company in which they intend to invest. Stock is issued in two forms, preferred stock or shares and common stock or shares. 
Preferred stocks must pay a dividend before the dividend payment is made for common stocks. They also do not usually have voting rights, and therefore a preferred stock owner has no say in the management or operation of the company. Common stock owners have voting rights that allow them to express their wishes in regard to the company at the annual general meeting. Agents who earn their securities license can sell stocks, but agents who sell segregated funds will find stocks are part of their equity, balanced, and growth funds. Those stocks may be Canadian or foreign. Understanding stocks leads to a better understanding of these funds. People buy stocks to participate in their growth in value example, $1,000 worth of Apple shares bought in June 1997 would be worth $632,000 today, lower rate of taxation, and to receive dividends. Some buy stocks to take advantage of strategies for derivatives such as options. The growth or upside of owning a stock is unknowably large as witnessed by the increase in Apple shares, no one could have predicted in 1997 the development and consumer dominance of the iPod, iPhone, iPad, and Mac computers. The loss or downside can be a total loss of invested capital. 1.3.3.1 Advantages and Disadvantages of Stocks The main advantage of stock ownership is the ability to benefit from gains in a stock's price. There is no ceiling on how high a stock's price can rise, in theory. Other advantages include Black small square high degree of transparency in stock market investing. Stock prices are available for anyone to see through the stock market on which the stock is listed, such as the Toronto Stock Exchange. Black small square dividends. Each stock owner of record as of a certain date receives the dividend, a dollar or part dollar amount per share, e.g. 50 cents per share, after the dividend has been declared by the company directors. The dividends may benefit the investor by the dividend tax credit. However, many stocks including those of some of the largest companies, like Amazon, do not pay dividends. Black Small Square Opportunity to Attend Annual Meetings of the Corporation Owners of voting shares can vote on matters of concern, such as a change in management. Or management salaries Black Small Square Favorable Tax Rates for Capital Gains and Capital Losses Capital Gains Tax is the lowest rate of taxation to be paid on an investment return. A capital loss reduces a taxable capital gain. Black small square available in self-directed registered, such as RRSP, and non-registered accounts. Disadvantages of stock ownership include, black small square possibility of loss, even total loss, of principal invested, black small square possible absence of diversification in the portfolio that exposes the investor to risk, black small square need to monitor price movement and identify when to buy and sell. Black Small Square Not all companies pay dividends and there is no guarantee that dividends will be paid. Black Small Square Commissions Charged on Every Trade Black Small Square Liquidity Issues If stocks must be sold at a time when the price is depressed but the investor needs money, Black Small Square No Naming of a Beneficiary on a Non-Registered Account, Black Small Square No Creditor Proofing, Black Small Square No Ability to Rescind a Sale. 1.3.3.2 Where and How to Buy Stocks Stocks are listed on stock exchanges, such as the Toronto Stock Exchange, TSX. Each listed company is traded under its ticker symbol, which is an abbreviation of the company's name, such as BMO for the Bank of Montreal. Investors have a large number of companies from which to choose. In order to buy stocks an investor needs an account with an investment dealer that provides trading services, advice and recommendations with buying and selling provided on a commission basis, or a discount broker, buying and selling provided on a reduced commission basis. Stock trading is available online in a do-it-yourself approach or through traditional channels, such as an account at a dealer. An application is completed by the investor to satisfy the Know Your Client KYC, requirement for those who sell stocks. KYC information assures the sales representative that the investment is within the financial capability and risk tolerance of the investor. KYC should be reviewed annually and if there is a material change in the circumstances of the investor, such as retirement. 1.3.3.3 Returns and Guarantees of Stocks Returns on stocks are in the form of Black Small Square Capital Gains when stocks are sold at a profit Black small square dividends when declared by the board of directors. 
there is no guarantee that either a capital gain or dividend will be received. Any money invested can be lost. 1.3.3. For risks of investing in stocks. Stocks run the spectrum of risk. Blue chip stocks are the stocks of large, well known, and well established companies. For example, in Canada, Canadian National Railway is considered a blue chip stock. Blue chip stocks are one of the least risky forms of stock ownership. The most risky are so called penny stocks. They are stocks valued at less than $5 that are typically illiquid and highly speculative. Penny stocks may include well known companies, such as Bombardier, in addition to smaller firms that are not household names. An investor in stocks can experience market risk, industry risk, and the risk of loss of principal invested. This loss can be total. Currency risk can diminish returns if an investment is made in foreign currency. Forms of risk are discussed later in this chapter. Derivatives, such as options, exist to help mitigate risk of stock ownership. They are advanced investing strategies and beyond the scope of this manual. 1.3.3.5 Investor Protection Similar to the protection provided by Assuries on the life insurance side, investor protection for stock investors is provided by the Canadian Investor Protection Fund, CIPF, in case of investment dealer insolvency. CIPF protects accounts held by its members to specified limits if the dealer becomes insolvent. This does not protect against a decline in the value of the investment, it only covers losses associated with the bankruptcy of a dealer. CIPF member firms are investment dealers that are the members of the Investment Industry Regulatory Organization of Canada, IROC. It is important to understand that no protection is available for declines in the market price of stocks. If the market price of a stock goes from, say, $100 to $2, investors in that stock have no protection from losses sustained. Their only recourse to try to limit their loss on a declining stock is to sell the stock, if a willing buyer can be found. 1.3 point for bonds. Stocks are an equity investment. Bonds are a debt investment. This is because bonds represent a debt between a borrower, who is the bond issuer, and a lender, who is the bond investor. Bonds are also called a fixed income security. Many segregated funds focus on bonds or include bonds as part of their portfolio. Therefore, an agent who understands bonds will also have a better understanding of bond funds. Issuers of bonds fall into two broad categories, governments and corporations, both national and international. When an issuer needs money, it issues a bond, which is purchased by investors. The investor, in effect, is lending money to the issuer and the bond is the IOU. The bond market in Canada is huge. In 2020, it was about $1.90 trillion.2. Bonds are issued with a fixed maturity date. On that date, the borrower, the issuer, repays the full principal amount to the lender, the investor. The period of time between the issue of the bond and its maturity date is called the term to maturity. Bonds are issued with a wide range of terms to maturity from one year to 30 years. An investor can sell a corporate or government bond before its maturity date to another investor, and an active market exists for buying and selling bonds. This is called the secondary bond market. In return for using the investor's funds for the term of the bond, the issuer makes two promises to the investor. First, during the term to maturity period, the issuer will make regular interest payments to the investor. The interest rate is called the coupon rate of the bond and is typically payable twice a year. Second, the issuer will repay the full face value of the bond to the investor at maturity. Bonds that are issued with a high credit rating can preserve and increase capital, as well as provide a predictable stream of payments in the form of interest income. A high credit rating indicates a low chance of the issuer defaulting on payments to investors. 1.3.4.1 Advantages and Disadvantages of Bonds Bonds are issued by a wide range of domestic and international business and government entities. Therefore an investor can choose among credit ratings, issuers, terms to maturity, and coupon rates, i.e., interest rates, 
to build a diversified portfolio of bonds with the aim of delivering higher returns while reducing overall risk. Managers of bond funds follow such a strategy. Repayment of the face amount and interest payments are guaranteed for government bonds issued by many countries because the issuing government has government revenue at its disposal to meet its obligations. Countries such as Canada, the US, and the nations of the European Union are able to such guarantees. On the other hand, countries struggling with political or economic uncertainty may represent a risk of default. This could include countries such as Turkey, Egypt, Brazil, or Argentina. A government that could not meet its bond payments as they became due would experience a total loss of international investor confidence. Corporate Bond issuers make a commitment to repay their investors for the same reason they need investor confidence, so they will be successful when they need to borrow more money via bonds in the future. However, there is a greater chance payments will not be made for a corporate bond than government bonds since a corporation's fortunes can change quickly, and a corporate issuer might not have the necessary capital at its disposal to repay investors. Breaking the promise to repay investors is taken very seriously. Corporate bonds run the spectrum of risk and investors who are prepared to take a higher risk are rewarded with higher interest payments from the bond. Bonds are purchased by more sophisticated investors to balance typically large portfolios. Coupon payments made by bonds can also form a regular income stream. Investors are apprised of their risk by the credit rating given by bond rating agencies. Canadian government bonds are rated amongst other bonds with the highest credit ratings, due to the government's ability to pay interest and repay the principal. There is a lack of transparency in the buying process that puts bond investors at a disadvantage. An investor may not necessarily get the best price, and by overpaying, total return is diminished. Also, terminology used to describe prices and yields of bonds can be confusing to average investors. 1.3.4.2 Where and How to Buy Bonds Bonds are available through advisors licensed by IROC and some members of the Mutual Fund Dealers Association, MFDA, who are licensed as limited market dealers. Many financial advisors do not have direct access to bonds because their licenses do not permit them to offer these types of securities.